What's going on, guys? And welcome to my first ever Q&A. Thank you so much to each and every one of you that took time and hooked me up with a question because without your questions, this video wouldn't be possible. So today we're going to be answering all of your questions and just taking a little time to talk about the future of the channel and plans I have overall. But before all that, I just want to say one more time, a huge thank you to each and every one of you. I cannot be any more grateful and appreciative for the continuous support you guys give me. Truly seeing all these positive comments means a lot to me and it helps me push to make even better teams for you guys. So thank you for this huge milestone and this is only the beginning. Now. Let's get right into this Q&A. All right, let's get on to the first question. What is your favorite Pokemon game and why? Uh, my favorite Pokemon game, it's gotta be Fire Red and Leaf Green. That was the very first game I ever owned. And you guys don't understand how many times I played through that whole game and completed it and got all my Pokemon to level 100. I must have played through that game like five times. And then when I got older, just like uh, two or three years ago, I restarted my copy once again and began shiny hunting in it. Um, I did like a whole Dream Team stuff. And we still have that copy up and running. Funny enough, in that game, I have a shiny Snorlax named Dumpling. <laughs> but yeah, the nostalgia behind that game and it being my very first Pokemon game, it holds a very special place in my heart. So that is my favorite Pokemon game. And just it, no other Pokemon game feels how Fire Red Leaf Green felt for me when I was a kid. Would you ever consider teaching your method of madness in team building? Methods of madness. Listen, I have been considering um, like either one of two things. I could start make, making videos where I explain each team more in depth or I could stream um, in the future the process of me making these teams, which I think would be more fun. But yeah, I would love to teach my weird team building um, tactics. Just got to figure out how I'd want to do it. But yeah, I, I would be willing to do that. What are you doing for Easter? And if Nintendo ever made Snorlax evolve, what should they do? Okay, so for Easter, um, not really going to do much. I got to go to work in like, what, four hours right now, I think four hours. And then probably just come home and have dinner with the fam. That's pretty much it. Um, but in terms of Snorlax, if Nintendo were ever to make Snorlax evolve, the first thing that they must change is its shiny. Being an avid shiny hunter and a huge fan of Snorlax, Snorlax's shiny is just very disappointing and upsetting. That thing is horrific. It doesn't really look that different. So that would be the first thing I would make them change. Make sure that they give it a different um, shiny color. In terms of what kind of color I would give it, I think maybe a lavender on it would be pretty cool. A lavender shiny Snorlax, that'd be pretty cool. But in terms of design, mm, that's kind of tough. I really wouldn't change much. Maybe make him a little bigger and give him some armor plates instead of like the sumo, the sumo kind of vibe that he has. Just like completely wipe that and give him some like armor plates on his shoulders, on his chest, on his legs, and just make him look like a like a like almost a samurai type of thing. But yeah, that's that's pretty much. It would be really hard to make Snorlax evolve. I wouldn't really want to give it extra arms or extra head or any of that stuff. I think just making them bigger, making them bulkier and giving him some type of like armor plates to make him look cooler. Favorite legendary Pokemon. Um, That's got to be Curium. With Sogaleo being a very close second. But the fact that like Curium can combine with Reshiram and Zekrom and become a white Curium and a black Curium. It just looks so sick and so clean. And also doesn't help that Gen 5 is my favorite generation. So yeah, Kyurem is my favorite legendary. Um, which game did you start Pokemon and which game did you get into VGC? So like I said earlier, my very first game was Fire Red Leaf Green. That was the very first Pokemon game I ever owned. And in terms of VGC, I got into the competitive scene um, in Sword and Shield. That was the very first time where I started playing VGC. And let me tell you, I was awful. I was horrendous. I would always get destroyed by your Urshifu, by your Regilecki, Grim Snarls. I would just get obliterated every time. So after being humbled and humiliated, <laughs> that's when I decided to start doing research and just learning about VGC, learning about the different items, abilities, tactics, um, gimmicks, strategies, all that type of stuff. What is the meta? You know, what's, you know, all that type of stuff. That's when I started like delving into more of that stuff and learning it. And once I put something into my mind, I just make sure I learn it. So I did massive research on all the different types of Pokemon. And I ended up just practicing, 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 and ended up doing pretty decent in VGC, I guess. What Pokemon do you want to use but didn't have a chance to? Um, funny enough, one Pokemon that I really want to use that I haven't used yet is Kamala. Number one, that thing is adorable. It's just a sleeping koala. Number two, just imagine getting beat by a cute little koala. And its ability is so cool. I think it's comatosis, I think it's what it's called, which is just the Pokemon is always asleep. So it can't get any type of status alignment. It can't be paralyzed, it can't be poisoned, it can't be burned, nothing. So that's definitely a video that I definitely want to do soon. I just need to get a shiny Kamala. So expect that video soon. 
how do you make a team with unusual picks for Pokemon? So I always focus on just picking one Pokemon that I want to build a team around. Then I just see, okay, what does it need? Does it need weather? Does it need trick room? Whatever the case may be, whatever suits it best. And then I pick its primary partner, the Pokemon that's going to allow it to set up. So most of the time with these, um, these unusual Pokemon, they need that plus two in attack. They need that um, speed boost, whatever the case may be in order for them to be actually viable. Um, so if that's either going for follow me and allowing them to go for Sword Sands or activating their weakness policy, we need some partner that will allow them to get up and going. And to be honest, the partner Pokemon doesn't actually have to be a meta type Pokemon. It's actually preferable if it's an unusual Pokemon, because then that way your opponent has no idea what tactic or what um idea you're going for. And then it's just about balancing the team. I normally like to run my team with two support Pokemon and two physical attackers and two special attackers. You don't necessarily need to do that like two, 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 two type of tactic, but I do like myself having two um, supportive Pokemon. That way I can either, you know, two trick room setters, two Pokemon that can heal, two redirection or two speed control, you know, all that type of stuff. And then I like having a physical and special split because just in case they have Intimidate on the other side or Snarls, you know, you have that physical Pokemon that won't be affected by Snarls or you have that special Pokemon that won't be affected by Intimidate. And then you just have that diversity with the team. And then finally, obviously you have to take into consideration the type matchup so whatever that pokemon is weak to you obviously want to pick something that's going to resist um whatever that pokemon was weak to help cover for its weaknesses and then have pokemon that have a wide range of move pools so that you have coverage across the whole team would you consider viewer submitted team fixings on the channel so if you mean like edits that you guys would make to my teams 100 percent. so the thing it the the thing for me is it's do i want to make teams with completely different pokemon or would you guys be okay with seeing the same team showcase with just edits that you guys have suggested so for example the talk specs team that i made a while back i had some really good suggestions of like putting salazzo on the team with corrosion just to be able to poison um poison and steel types like those are really good suggestions and i do want to build that team again and like perfect it but like it's like we have so many different pokemon that we haven't showcased on the squad yet that we want to put those up first so i will 100 percent um rebuild these teams with suggestions and edits that you guys make so yeah 100 percent. because listen at the end of the day there are some things that i don't catch and there and there are some things that you guys can think of more creatively than i did so hey listen i will always take advice and um edit from you guys i would love to and please keep com keep them coming my way will you continue creating content from here on out hell yeah there's so much more content um that i want to put out um continue to do vgc battles obviously my unusual picks um definitely some playthroughs on the new games that come out either the main series games or offspin games and then i have some ideas for new content that i want to do so we'll get to that later later on but nuzlocke is something i consider doing on the channel very soon how long have you been playing competitive pokemon um so as i mentioned earlier i started playing competitive pokemon in sword and shield and that's when i really started getting into vgc and just studying literally everything you have to in order to be good at vgc you have to study so many different things but yeah sword and shield what's your most slash least favorite strategy or gimmick to play as and most slash least favorite to play against i think my favorite strategy right now is playing with weakness policy i think weakness policy is a really good item and if you are able to get that weakness policy activated in a unique way that most people won't be able to see listen getting that pokemon a plus two and then just going from there is just gonna benefit you greatly so Definitely weakness policy. For example, the um, Bruxish and Cloth team that I made, where Bruxish would go for Aqua Jet onto Cloth, activating Speaking Hall, getting it a plus two. That was so sick. Like, that did damage. So, definitely weakness policy, my favorite. Now, my least favorite to play against is. Uh, I'm going to say Snow Teams. The reason I say Snow Teams is because once they. If you have no type of weather control on your team, and they're able to get up snow easily and get up an aurora veil there's no way you can win almost i think it's almost guaranteed you lose because now they have that extra bulk that 50 percent bulk in defense and special defense meanwhile you're sitting there like a hopeless duck so i think snow teams without me having any weather control are the most annoying i do love myself a good weather control battle but if they have snow and i have no type of weather control it's just it's just a lose already what kind of style of team do you like to play most 
And do you have any tips when it comes to tomb building? 100% Trick Room. I feel like personally, my Trick Room teams that I have built on the channel are one of the best teams I make. And I just have so much more fun with Trick Room teams. And I feel like I have more control in Trick Room teams. And don't get me wrong. Like, I understand Trick Room teams could be very easy if you just go for like Follow Me plus Trick Room. But most of the time, I don't like going for that simple strategy. I know I did that with um the reuniclus video but most of the time i try to find the most unique or unorthodox way of setting up trick room and then using the most unusual pokemon in trick room so definitely trick room i feel like i'm more confident and much better with trick room teams and as i mentioned earlier by any tips i think just focusing on one pokemon and building around that one pokemon you could always go hyper offensive but i prefer always having like i said two supportive mons on my team and just balancing with two physical and two special attackers also take into consideration what the current meta is. You always have to build a team based on what the meta is. So for example, I always need to have a steel or grass type move on my team just to counter those flutter mains and urshifus that you are bound to see in almost every other battle. So just um, always having into consideration what the meta is and adjusting your move sets and your terror types to whatever the meta is. And going off the terror types, specifically in this game, I'd always recommend giving your Pokemon defensive terror types instead of offensive terror types. Because number one, offensive terror types don't even give you a full 1.5 times stab. I think it's 1.2, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, like, it's not even as good as stab would be, number one. Number two, defensive terror just allows you to sit in front of a Pokemon that you'd normally be weak to. You can Terrasize and just resist that Pokemon completely and counteract it with a super effective move that you might have. So, 100%, give your Pokemon defensive terrors. And always just focus on one Pokemon and never forget to take into consideration what the actual meta is at the time. What What is your job? Um, funny enough, uh, I have a full-time job as a manager in BJ's Wholesale Club. What other games do you play? Um, so other games that I currently play right now are Fortnite and Rocket League. I used to grind those games a lot more than I do now. More, more so now I only play Pokemon, but back then I used to play Fortnite and Rocket League a lot. And then another game that I actually play quite frequently and that i love is arc survival evolved or arc survival ascended which is what it's now called i believe it's just like a open world um dino game that i just absolutely love it's so much fun and i even considered making a little series on that game in the channel but i wasn't sure yet because i'm more of a pokemon based um channel but if i do ever venture into a different type of game it would be into arc survival evolved what changes and improvements would you make to scholar and violet and even future pokemon games to make vgc competitive more balanced plus fair and help new players to make it more beginner friendly so i think they moved in the right direction with vgc and making it more fair for everyone and more accessible for everyone i think the fact that it is much easier now to build pokemon and bring them into VGC and try different things. And for example, if like for example, if you want to do a Rillaboom, a defensive Rillaboom with AV, you can do that. Or if you want to make an attacking Rillaboom, you can easily reset all of the TVs and easily grind to set up a new type of Rillaboom. So I think the way that they've set up VGC where you can just easily grind out um materials and build these different Pokemon is very nice. And I think just any improvements would be just to make this grinding process much easier because it is a lengthy process to get all these poke coins and have to buy all these um ev training stuff reset all the ivs i think maybe the way all these items could be accessible maybe could, should be more easier especially after you've been in the game but yeah i think they're definitely moving the right direction and just making all these materials they need to build pokemon much easier and much accessible would you ever use it an AI team builder to create a team for you. <laughs> that would actually be pretty, pretty cool. That's a pretty cool idea. I might have to make that a video soon, but yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I would definitely um, use a team that AI creates for me and build it on my game. What inspired you to start doing VGC battles? So I have always loved Pokemon and, but what got me to VGC and Pokemon battles dates back to Fire Red Leaf Green. So my brother and I each had a copy of Fire Red Leaf Green and in those copies, we would shiny hunt and build teams and battle against each other. And we would use every Pokemon from a Dragonite to a Parasect. And always they had to be shiny. So that's why you see in every team that I build, every Pokemon, if their shiny is out and available, it's always going to be shiny. Um, so yeah, it, it goes back to, to Fire Red Leaf Green days. Me and my brother would battle out. It was so much fun. And even with that small pool of Pokemon abilities and moves, it was already fun. And now think about it. With all these different types of Pokemon, all these abilities and all these moves, it's just much more fun. 
And also on top of that, I'm also a very competitive person <laughs> and VGC just brings that competitiveness out of me and I love it. So it's so much fun playing VGC and yeah. What was your favorite and least favorite video to film? Uh, my favorite video so far has to be the greeting team that I built. I absolutely love that team. And the fact that I built that all by myself is what makes this team even more special to me because it's just an idea that i came out of with by myself no help no nothing it's just i just came out of, i just created it. i don't know how i thought of it but i i did it and i absolutely love the team so definitely my favorite video that i filmed so far and my least favorite has to be the duck trio video that was such a disappointing video because number one i had high hopes for the for duck trio i thought he was gonna I should do really well with the bright powder and under sandstorm but he did absolutely horrible so definitely my least favorite also the fact that it took me like two to three hours just to get like two victories two or three victories however many i got yeah it, it was it was pretty upsetting so duck trio unfortunately has to be my least favorite video for now how much time you usually take to cook up a team so um to cook up a team it usually takes me like around a day obviously i'm not building this team throughout the whole day but it does take me a day to just think of a team completely then from there i need to shiny hunt whatever pokemon i don't have a shiny version of then i need to grind for Poke coins by just massacring a whole bunch of chancy outbreaks and then completing a whole bunch of bp bp quests to get um bps then i go to the pokeball lotto machine and just get a bunch of materials that i end up selling for coins in order to buy ev um ev bottles like the protein the hp stuff and then from there, I have to make sure that I have whatever material I need to build the TMs that I need for the Pokemon. And after that, I just need to give them the right Terra type and the right IVs. So to do all that, it normally takes me like four to six hours if I have a good head start with materials. If I am starting from scratch, I have to shiny hunt the whole team. It could take me a whole day to shiny hunt the whole team, um, get all the Poke coins that I need and give them the right moveset. So yeah. It's a damn grind, but it's a grind that I enjoy doing. If you were to make a team that consisted only of starter Pokemon, which six would you choose? Easy. Charizard, Sceptile, Greninja, Torterra, Incineroar, and Rillaboom. Why? Just because those are my favorite Pokemon. Favorite starter Pokemon. <laughs> Let's hear your thoughts on the Pokemon anime, favorite Pokemon, characters, battles, and series. Okay, so the anime did a horrible decision by letting go of Ash. Like, no, that's just, that's just, that shouldn't be a thing. Like, Ash is the OG everybody had built so much um love and care for ash as a character so it was a horrible decision to get rid of ash and just go to a completely different realm and there's no pikachu like the og pikachu is gone like no um in terms of my favorite series the Kalos series has to be my favorite it was just so sick so hype the animation the battles the storyline oof it was the best um my favorite pokemon obviously snorlax and then my favorite battle in the anime, I guess you're asking, has to be Ash versus Alan. All the Megas, the Mega Charizard um, X versus the Ash Greninja. It was just such a sick battle. Definitely has to be my favorite battle. And then after that, a close second will have to be um, Paul versus Ash. That's the Infernape versus uh, Electivire. Very sick battle. Any tips for getting Pokemon trained up for competitive fast? How long does it take you to make a, uh, a team? It sometimes seems like it takes me a while rank season to finally get all my Pokemon trained up for my next team. Like I said, some tips, like one tip that I would give in order to make team building much easier is just like take a day or two and completely grind for Pokecoins by getting a whole bunch of um, the Happiny Dust and get a whole bunch of BPs and then just go to the Pokeball machine, just um, print a bunch of items. You'll get a bunch of nuggets, um, a bunch of items that you can just sell for a lot of money. And then you'll have a whole bunch of money to buy EVs, to buy whatever items you may need, all that stuff. So, because what, what takes the longest normally is EV training your Pokemon. So having all that money is the best thing that you can do. And once you have all that money, it becomes so easy for you to experiment with different different builds of Pokemon. For example, if you want to change the build on one Pokemon, you can just easily reset the EVs on one Pokemon and just build the same Pokemon in a completely different matter. You can go from attacking to defensive or defensive to attacking. So yeah, definitely just grind a whole bunch of money and you can then have so many different ways of building a Pokemon team. And now I just want to take a little time to talk about the future of the channel and what to expect. So I will 100% continue to do these VGC battles and 
make my unusual teams that's never that's never going anywhere that's always going to stay here but i do plan on adding more content to more type of content onto the channel so the very first thing i want to add are what would you call it nuzlocks sorry i completely wiped i just blanked out there nuzlocks i do want to do nuzlocke videos and make like a little mini series on nuzlocks so let me know down below what you guys think about that i still think regardless i am going to put up um a nuzlocke and see how it does I'm not going to do a whole episode. It's going to be like little episodes at a time just to make it um, viewer friendly. And then in the future, I do plan on streaming and doing like battles against viewers and streaming like the process that I go through on team building. That way I can explain as I'm building these teams and I can show you guys exactly what I what I have to go through to build these teams. So definitely Nuzlocke, you should expect that maybe in the next couple of weeks and then more vgc battles i'm super excited for the new games that are gonna come out in the future for example um the legend za game oh i'm so excited about that game like that game is gonna be so sick i cannot wait for it so that's definitely something that we will be delving into every single game that comes out we're gonna be jumping into and yeah streaming that's gonna be another thing that you guys can expect in the future uh doing viewer battles and then that'd be really fun doing battles against you guys and then also streaming just like the process that i go through on team building and shiny hunting all that type of stuff i could just stream and explain to you guys exactly the process of how i think <laughs> think of these things and how i build them on an actual paper and then also um if i end up doing nuzlocke and it becomes a good thing that you guys enjoy i could also stream the nuzlocke that i do so definitely nuzlocke to look forward to in the next couple of weeks and then streaming in the near future and then battles against you guys which will be really fun but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope you guys got a little bit more information about me with this q a and i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys in the next one see ya